when you're really low carb and carnivore, you begin to realize that it's almost never possible to eat out, no matter what you pick on the menu. Hey there, njroot22.com here. Today we're talking about restaurants and being a low carb or keto or carnivore type person. Let me give you a quick background here. For the better part, for almost all of the last decade, I've been in the low carb mindset. That means, you know, I understood the, the importance of keeping your blood sugar low and that was like a really good way to, to lose body fat, uh, go into ketosis, all that stuff. Anyone watching this probably already knows that. And throughout the years, I, I, I had my ups and downs. I failed a couple times. I never went back to full pizza eating, uh, hoagie sandwich eating type nonsense. But I had my, uh, my mistakes along the way with, with like, gluten-free, like somebody in my family was gluten-free and we kind of started screwing around with that, uh, not because we wanted to, because the food was there. Uh, we didn't buy it for ourselves. But anyway, despite my low-carb um, mindset, we did find ourselves eating out every now and then. And you know, I, I, like in the beginning, it was like so hard to find things on the menu. You had to customize the food, oh, I just want the beef patty, da, da, da. I don't want fries, da, da, da. But and this was a few years ago, like, oh, I got the salad, I got... In the, just the past uh, year or so, we're realizing that, that, you know, we went almost to the zero carb plan, uh, which is meat only, carnivore, as they say. Uh, the hardcore carnivore people just eat nothing but meat, and, and a lot of times it's raw, just raw meat. Like, like raw ground beef, or they'll cook it for a second just to make it, give it a little flavor. <sighs> but our, our mindset is, is more uh, along the lines of animal-based. So I eat meat, cooked most of the time, rare, medium rare. Dairy, which is uh, cream, heavy cream, and uh, cheese products. And the eggs from the chicken. That's, uh, we even got rid of the chicken. I, I really can't, I used to swear by chicken thighs, but when you've been just meat and uh, and dairy, and then you, you try to eat some chicken, it, it, you feel weird. So what I'm trying to say basically is, for the past year, I've isolated my food types, my intake, a lot. And I should also say that like almost all of the food I eat, I make myself. I buy the raw ingredients and I cook it or prepare it myself. So that gives me a long stretch of, of isolating the types of foods I eat. And I'll be honest, I feel great. I feel great almost all the time. I know, no inflammation, no digestive issues, no problems at all, no gas, no stomach aches, nothing. And this is, this is why I suggest that restaurants in general, and, and by re restaurants in general, I mean any chain restaurant where the owner it's not either personally overseeing or cooking the food themselves. On my radar, when I don't have plenty of food at home in the refrigerator, on my radar are places that are owned by, or the chef is the owner. Um, there's a couple barbecue places in the njroot22.com area I wanna try out. There's Jersey Q in Clinton, there's the All American Barbecue way out, and I think, God, I forget where that is. Uh, somewhere out there near Wachung. And there's barbecue places all over. Uh, but you got to watch out. And the reason I say this is because the few times we do go out or get food takeout, uh, delivered, I pick, I can find something on the menu every time. I can just get a, a, a chicken dish or a beef dish or just order the burger. Uh, I used to order wings thinking they were okay, but they're breaded and, and the wheat. You start feeling funny. Like, like you feel that something wrong has gone into your body. Um, and when you, you've isolated your food so much, you're instantly aware that there's something wrong with the food. You don't know what all the time, or any of the time, really. Um, for instance, I can go get a burger patty somewhere, at a diner, for instance, or at, at, a, at, a, at a place like Chili's, and I'll eat it, and I don't feel right. They're, the problem is, they, we, you know that the, the ingredient name, i.e. meat or, or steak or whatever it is, is good 
by the name alone, but you don't know how they prepared it. What kind of seasonings did they use? What kind of oil or fats did they cook or fry the meat in? Um, is there any wheat nearby on the grill or what have you? Um, the the contaminant, uh, contamination of the kitchen utensils. There's a whole lot of crap that you don't know what's happening. And especially with uh, commercial like chain restaurants, I truly believe, and I can't prove this, that they put dangerous or addictive chemicals uh, in, into their food or their seasonings or their salts or what have you. MSG, I don't even know what it is. It, it could be a million things, but I could tell right away when I eat something at a restaurant, a, a commercial restaurant, that something isn't right. And even though it's perfectly low carb or carnivore or keto, whatever you want to call it, I could tell that the way it was prepared, since I wasn't there, I couldn't see what was going on. Something I, my body didn't like was inside there. And, and this is why it's very hard for us to, to eat out at restaurants. So I just don't do it anymore. I mean, if like someone in our family uh, likes, is craving chilies, uh, spicy chicken salad. And I, I tasted a piece of the, the breaded chicken and I could tell right away, just when I bit it, that um, I mean, they put the, the spice inside the coating, or whatever you want to call that coating, and it was crispy. The texture was phenomenal. I loved it. I, I could eat, back in the day, I, I would have loved to just snack on that or eat it um, plain. There was something artificial, foreign in it, and that was not meant for the human body to eat. It, it made me feel funny. It, it, uh, it, it caused cravings, obviously the wheat and the carbs in it. Um, but just don't uh, don't even eat out anymore. Just buy your meat raw, and and I really don't think meat is a problem. Even if you buy El Cheapo, Shoprite meat, ground beef. I mean that that could be a, a unraveling of a story for a future uh, uh, time period, um, where that there's artificial crap inside even the, the raw uh, ground beef. But, uh, and, and that's an, yet another story for another day about the difference between the organic, grass-fed, free-range meats and the uh, ordinary El Cheapo meats. Because there are a lot of people on carnivore that say it don't make a difference. It don't make, it doesn't make a difference. Um, and so far uh, in, into our carnivore uh, uh, endeavors that the, like I, I buy Wegmans meat for a buck 99 a pound and it's great. It's not as tasty, let's say, as a Pat La Frida a blend of meat, which is beyond. It's like filet mignon of ground beef versus the ground beef of ground beef. Um, but the restaurants, they, they do something. They do something to the, the food. Um, just find a restaurant where the owner is the chef and they can talk to you about every single ingredient they put into their foods and where they source it from. Because when you go to a commercial restaurant, you're uh, you're leaving your fate into someone else's hand. It's usually a corporate office somewhere that buys things in bulk from questionable sources. So just uh, keep that in mind. Just do it yourself when you when you're a carnivore keto low carb, because um, that's the only way you can be fully in control. I mean, ideally you you want to have your own uh, uh, cattle farm and you're butchering the animals yourself, uh, at that point, uh, it, it's, it's not meant, hardly any of us can, can do that. So, so regular meat, no restaurants, except owner uh, run restaurants uh, where you can talk to them exactly about what's going on. So Let's see, we're, we have 52 more videos in this, uh, on this channel coming up for the next year. Every Sunday at uh, 6 a.m., new videos. And uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed my, uh, my insight. Have a nice week ahead.